In this lesson, we're going to talk about the security triad, also known as the CIA triad. Now, no discussion in ethical hacking would be complete without talking about this foundational concept. Before we start attacking these areas, we have to understand what CIA stands for, so we understand when we start targeting things what we're attacking in the information security realm. Because as a cybersecurity person, my whole job is to protect the CIA triad. And so we're going to attack it using ethical hacking. We need to understand what it is. So what are the components of the CIA triad? Well, it's confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And these three tenants are the tenants of information system security for data and services. If we have these three things, we're going to have a secure system. Now, the question comes in, how much of each of these three things do I have? Is it going to be a nice, pretty equal amount or not? Well, we'll talk about each one individually. First, we have confidentiality. How secure is my information? The other question is, how secure does the data need to be? I'll give you a great example. If you go to my website, my public-facing website, it, you can just go to jasondion.com, and you're going to see a web page. On that web page is information that is not confidential. It's fully out there for everyone in the public to be, and I'm okay with that because I want you to see that information. Now, if I have a file in one of my subdirectories of that um, that website, I may want to encrypt it, and maybe that file is my social security card with my social security number. I don't want you to have that information, my date of birth or my social security number, uh, my address, things like that. So I might want to make that more confidential. How do I secure it? Well, I can use things like encryption. That's an electronic protection for it. I, when I store that information, or that information is in transit, my passwords, my firewalls, my two-factor authentication, all of those things are things that add to my confidentiality. When I talk about physical protections, that would be like locked doors, fences, security guards, security cameras, safes. So if I have my social security card in my house, it's locked up in a safe so no one can steal it. If I had a digitized version of that, I might have that electronic file encrypted and then stored in my Dropbox, right? Uh, or an online cloud share service, something of that nature. It all depends on what that information is and how secure it needs to be. My bank account information needs to be very secure. My public facing website does not. So those are things we look at with confidentiality. Now, if you have a failure of confidentiality, that means someone can obtain and view the data you have. So if they steal that electronic file that is encrypted, but they don't have the decryption key, so they can't read it, it is not a failure of confidentiality. It's another failure, but it's not a failure of confidentiality. But if they can obtain it and view the data, that's when confidentiality has been breached. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is integrity. And integrity is all about how correct is that information? How has the data been modified in retrieval, in transit, or in storage? So if I have, for instance, your bank account balance, you want that information to be exact. If you have $1,000 in the bank, you'd be really mad if you woke up tomorrow and it said $10 because they dropped two zeros. Um, you might be really happy if they took your 1000 and made it 100000 by adding two zeros. But again, we're talking about integrity, and that would be a change in the information. We want the information to be accurate and the way we intended it, whether that's stored in the database, whether that's being transmitted to you over the internet, or whether that is already there retrieved and in storage on your desktop. The way we do this is with hashing of files, and we can also use checksums if we're doing it during data transmission. So what a hash is, is basically a unique fingerprint, and we'll talk much more about hashes later, because we're going to be talking about MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, and other hashing methods um, when we get into the details of integrity. But for right now, just understand that if I have a file and I take a unique hash of it, I have created a unique fingerprint. And I can compare that fingerprint from the time it left my machine to the time it got to your machine. And if they match, that file will had full integrity all the way through the transit. And that's something that we're looking for. The failure of integrity occurs if someone modifies the data, either while it's being stored, while it's being retrieved, or in transit. And those can be happen in lots of different ways. We'll talk about things like data, uh, data diddling, um, salami techniques, and others as we talk about the the theft of confident of, of integrity, excuse me, the theft and destruction of integrity of a file. The third one that we talk about is availability. That's the A in CIA. And availability is all about uptime and accessibility. So how much uptime is the system providing? Is the data accessible by all users at all times? Uh, if it is, then you have good availability. So the ways we do this is through redundancy and backup. If we have redundant system design, including components and data paths, we can make sure we have a strong uptime. If we have backup strategies that are good in disaster recovery plans, if we do go down, we can get back up quicker. That adds to our availability. Why is availability important? Well, 
Let's take Amazon, for example. I read an article the other day that for every one minute that Amazon is down, they lose $66,000 in sales. That's a pretty big number. Do you think availability is really important to them? Certainly. So they've got dozens and dozens and hundreds of servers out there that all work in tandem so that if one server goes down, the other 99 can keep it up and running. That's a reliability through redundancy that's going to give them more availability, keeping the system up. Usually the goal for availability is what we call five nines, 99.999%. That means that we can be down a total of five minutes every year, and that's it. That is what we look for for availability, and some places go even further than that. So what is a failure of availability? Well, it occurs if the data cannot be accessed by the end user. So if I go to Amazon right now and I can't get to the website because their internet connection is down, that's a failure of availability. If I try to go to Amazon's website and I can't get to it because the servers are down because they lost power, that's an availability issue. So you can see there's a lot of ways we can attack that availability. The hardware could crash, the power could go out, the internet connection could go out. As an end user, I don't care. I just know that the service is down that I'm looking for and availability has been hurt. So when we look at the CIA triad, this security triad, a lot of people always try to get this balanced approach to information security. They go, I have perfect confidentiality, perfect integrity, and perfect availability. And you see my beautiful equal-sided triangle here. Well, is that how it works in the real world? No. I'll take a great example. Um, how about something like this? We have high confidentiality, high availability, but low, or high integrity, but low availability. So. Let's say I have something like, um, we'll use paper documents. I have a file that I want to make sure is very secure. So I take that, that document and I encrypt it. And I scramble up all the words and only I know the code and the person I'm sharing with knows the code. So in addition to that, I do a checksum. I add up all the letters and I give each one a name, like uh, A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, and then I add up all the letters and I get a number at the end and that's my checksum. And I write that at the bottom of the document. So I have this encrypted message and a checksum. High confidentiality, high integrity. But I take this folder and I lock it in the lockbox. I take that lockbox and I lock it in a safe and I spin the dial. Does that have high availability? Well, no, it's hard to get to. But that's okay because I really cared about the security of it more than I did the availability of it. And that's okay if that's how your system's gonna be designed. It depends on your use case, right? That's a, a physical mean, but we can do the same thing with computers. Let's look at another one. What if I have low confidentiality, but high integrity and high availability? What would be a good example of that? Well, a public facing advertising website would be. So if I want to go to coca-cola.com and look up the, the awesome advertisement they have for Coca-Cola today, or I go to jasondion.com and look at my advertisements on my page, I want low confidentiality. I don't care if anybody can see it because I want everybody to see it, right? So that's low confidentiality. But I have high integrity because I want the message that I'm putting out to be the message you receive. I don't want a website defacement to happen on my website. That would look bad. Uh, and then I want high availability. I want you to be able to go to my website 100% 100, 100 of the time, anytime, day or night, high availability, right? So high availability, high integrity, low confidentiality. Good example of that, public facing website. And so we have those different things, right? And so we always have this trade off. Um, I always talk about this with, with you know, when I'm, when I'm briefing people, the security versus operations, and it's always a trade-off. If you have the operational folks, they want everything easy and it to work 100% of the time. If you talk to the security folks, they want it to be secure 100% of the time, but that may not be fully operational, okay? What do I mean by that? Well, let's say I have a very high security system, like I talked about taking that file and I encrypted it, and I changed all the data and did a checksum, and then I locked it up in a filing cabinet, right? Is it available? Is it easy to operate with? No, because I have to take it out of the filing cabinet, unscramble everything, and then read it. That takes a lot of work. So that's high security, low operations, right? Let's change that around. Um, you go to, go to the bar and you order a drink from the waiter, right? You don't really care about the security of your drink order if everybody else in the room hears you. You just care that the message was received by the waiter quickly and that he gets your beer and brings it back to you. That is your high operations, low security, right? So we have this trade-off all the time in computer systems. You can never have high security and high operations. The two don't go together. There is this huge pull, and notice the color of the arrow. Green from an information security standpoint is high security, low operations in general, right? Red is low security, high operations. Really good operations, we get a lot done, but it's a very good chance that we're gonna get hacked. 
we probably are going to end up somewhere in the middle trying to get closer to the high security, low operations, right? But that's going to cost us time and money in operations, but it's going to cost us less time and money in security. And so that's the trade-off that we're always balancing. And if you get into the cybersecurity realm and you start doing pen testing, you start working as a consultant, you're going to see this a lot. You'll come in and say, hey, I've got the greatest system for you. It's only going to cost you a million dollars and it's going to do all this whiz-bang stuff for security. But it's going to take your guys three minutes longer every day to log into work. And they might say, nope, we don't want it, right? Because that's three more minutes of production that we're losing for 100,000 employees versus your $1 million security fee, right? It's, a, it's an extreme example, but that's the idea that we're talking about here. It's that security versus operations. You got to keep that in mind. All right, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please subscribe to our channel uh, at youtube.com slash Jason Dion Training. Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them in the, in the uh, comment section and we'll get back to you. Thanks.